All Thank right. You. Well, I say we get started. Welcome, everybody, to the Future of Diversity, a guest chef program sponsored by La Spiga, where uh, the purpose is to showcase the immense talent that we have um, here in the city of Seattle um, and the Seattle surrounding area um, of diversity, diverse backgrounds, um, cooking from, uh, from their cultures um, and guest chefs um, are invited to prepare a meal at La Spiga and it's a to-go meal and um, the people who purchase it can come and pick it up on the day, on the day uh, it um, indicated, which in this case is going to be Monday the 31st between 3 and 6. And most of you have already responded and let me know uh, what time you would like to pick your meal up. Um, and that's wonderful. If you haven't responded, go ahead and uh, let me know what time you're going to pick up so that we can make sure that your meal is ready. Um, a few housekeeping. I will ask you to keep yourself muted. And if we have time at the end, I would love to answer questions from the chat. So go ahead and put your questions in the chat um, and we will review those as we have time. Um, Again, for those of you who've just joined us, um, this is going to be recorded. So if you do not want your image uh, showcased, you're going to want to turn off your video. And without further ado, I would like to welcome Chef Will Yi, who has been cooking in the Seattle area for over 20 years. And he has cooked at uh, restaurants such as La Spiga. He cooked at the Ruins. Um, where he was bartending and doing prep uh, for their catering um, uh, uh, events. He then moved on to open his own catering company, Duo's Catering, um, and uh, uh, has worked also with Martin Yan, Yan, which is exciting. I don't know if we'll get a chance to talk about that, but that was also a very exciting um, uh, time of your life, um, I imagine. At least I enjoyed her hearing about that. But he's always been open to volunteering his time um, at events. He's always open to helping other people um, do their thing. And so today we're very honored and pleased to be able to welcome Will Yi to Future of Diversity Guest Chef Program. Welcome, Will. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yes. How are you doing today? Doing okay. No? You know, home from, you know, the deli. So I'm just, yep. you know, making sure my hair looks cute. So. Oh, it does. You look, <laughs> you look cute. You always look cute. You know that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So, so Will, you were born in the Philippines, um, but then you moved to the United States at a very early age. And if I'm, if I have my facts correct, you moved straight to Seattle. Um, is that right? And, um, but you were very young, but you grew up in Beacon Hill, which I was surprised to know about, um, which is where I've lived for the past 20 years. Um, tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Um, you know, exactly that. I mean, like Beacon Hill was back in the day, you know, growing up Beacon Hill in the 80s was the best, you know. Um, it all around you is basically, you know, people that look like me, you know. Beacon Hill was uh, definitely an Asian uh, hubbub of everything. You know, everyone really started in Beacon Hill and then moved off and kind of went out everywhere, like, like Kent, uh, Washington, or um, the South End or just other places. But uh, for me, Beacon Hill was the first place we landed, and our family had uh, a lot of homes uh, there. Grandma had 13 kids, so you can imagine that, you know, we were kind of everywhere. Um, so um, Beacon Hill was a, a big thing. So That's awesome. But your history runs deep. Yeah. I mean, you're not talking just Beacon Hill. I mean, your family has history in the International District. Yeah. Um, my uncle... Um, had a uh, lease a, a space down in Chinatown. Um, it was called Golden Star Deli Mart. Um, and to us, that was kind of a, um, a place where my mom and my uncle can just keep busy, especially, you know, tagging me along when I was a kid um, and putting me to work. So, um, and this is like six years old. So uh, it was, it was fun, even though getting up at five o'clock or 5.30 in the morning, you know, to make, you know, a percolators of coffee, and you know, 
disgustingly microwaved hamburgers <laughs> and getting like the the gays uh, uh donuts and uh apple pies uh, half off at cash and carry after <laughs> to sell for the store the next day um you know uh we uh, we were in the heart of chinatown and we really uh it was a little grocery store so we had um from you know it's a little cafe deli so we had just something for everyone but mostly uh we had you know liquor and like booze and um and like you know cigarettes and things that people like you know it's Chinatown so if uh, you don't know the area it's it's go poke now um and that's literally where it's at and it's across from Hinghe Park so imagine my eyes as a kid that was like how I grew up like it was the best because I got to you know run around especially going down to Wajamaya <laughs> and you sold booze too if I'm not mistaken oh my god yeah <laughs> As a kid, so the cash register, I was so short, still short, but I'd have to like, you know, I'd have to go up and like, you know, the the till was like, you know, uh, $1, $5, $10, $20, and I'd have to like just give change. But my uncle showed me how to do that. So it was pretty easy. I mean- You were counting a change at that age. <laughs> 40s, yeah, 40s, Colt 45s, those were the best. Especially like, you know, when, we, when I got a chance to sleep, I would be sleeping on top of these, you know, 40s, like on, in the back. <laughs> watching the black and white tv batman and robin <laughs> crazy child labor laws be damned i <laughs> oh, but i think that was the best though i mean like they really kept the rambunctious kid busy yeah so, yeah so at what point in your life did you find um your passion for cooking good food and eating good food um i think when we came to america i think uh you know, food, you know, growing up in, uh, in a big family, you know, big immigrant family like ours, uh, we were just surrounded by it. Um, and I think um, what really, what, what really hit was when I went to the Beacon Hill Library and finding like, you know, books and things like that, um, which was my first, my first book was actually a uh, cookbook. <laughs> which is, uh, that you the, just so happen to have handy. Uh, it's not the exact one, but it was a, Betty Crocker Boys and Girls uh, Campfire Cookbook. But I remember seeing all these little kids' faces and I was just like, so I was like, oh, if they can do it, I can do it too. And like, and it was for me, this exact thing, like I couldn't, we didn't, you know, coming to America, we didn't speak English. So I learned through just the pictures. So it was literally the step-by-steps. And I think that um, if you, if you if you know me, that's exactly how I cook. It's these step by steps and these imagery and pictures um, that really uh, resonate to me because uh, I'm forgetful. So I kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if once we see the Instagram posts, you'll <laughs> understand everything will make sense. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but um, so. And, and so then mealtime, you know, you have all these relatives around, everybody's cooking. I'm guessing traditional food from, from the Philippines, if you can find the ingredients, I don't know. Um, so mealtime for you was a very precious time. So tell us a little bit about mealtime, what it means to you and what your philosophies around food are. I think for me, growing up in a Chinese Filipino home, we had both cuisines going on all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, my philosophy uh, towards cooking has always been that traditional kind of sense of like making sure the flavors are there 100%, even though now we kind of uh, fuse it to different things and using different ingredients. Um, but um, I think uh, that's where it really lies is, uh, is just keeping those memories. Because for me, when I cook, I'm not just cooking, there's someone with me, you know, I, I'm remembering the stories, I'm remembering history, I'm remembering, you know, screaming in my ear of family members. <laughs> uh, like you're doing it wrong again even though they're not with me <laughs> and it's cooking olympics <laughs> it's totally comforting to me because it's it reminds me of a time where um you know that it was it was quieter it was you know you're with your family um yeah. that and that holds dear to me yeah and there's um how, how did how did one in your household how did one know that mealtime was ready <laughs> we would scream um well usually in any household it's like it's it's dinner time and then you'd go eat dinner and stuff like that but in a filipino household you would actually say these words 
um, gaena, which means time to eat. But it wouldn't be so nice. It would be screamed <laughs> from the like kitchen. What? Give us an example. I want to hear. Gaena! <laughs> <laughs> It would be and whose job happy. was it to call people to the table? <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. No, and that was my because I love like you know that. Oh, this is the chance I get to be loud. So I would like yeah. run around and tell all the uncles and aunts and you know cousins that it's time to eat. So it was kind of a thing, and I think that's uh, any Filipino would totally just like laugh and just know that like that sound. You're like, it's, yes, it's time to eat, but it's the best saying in the world. So. <laughs> It, it feels like home, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah exactly. I bet. Um, so talking about food, and what are you going to be making for us on Monday? We have um, three dishes uh, for you guys um, uh, this coming Monday. Um, first dish, we're making a papaya salad with gong gong, uh, which is a water spinach. Um, honestly, if you ask any Filipino, we don't really have a salad. <laughs> Um, but um, we had like different um, ingredients like papayas um, and herbs and things that we used. And uh, this is kind of my version of it, especially because the dressing, a tamarind is very huge um, in Filipino culture. And um, I wanted to um, put that out there. It's not going to be as spicy as what you guys are used to if you had papaya salad before um, in Hong Kong, um, but it's just on the sweeter side. Filipinos love it sweeter. So, but if you buy the chili sauce that's <laughs> there, you can add your own spice and get it up to the, uh, the flavors uh, that you're used to if you've had the papaya salad and stuff. So that's our but first dish. Kong, but the Kang Kong, you've got to tell us about the Kang Kong. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, growing up, um, my uncle, I hated it growing up because he would just drag me to um, uh, like everywhere in the city. Uh, and I find out later on that it was Kent because he would just... <laughs> It was Kent Washington that like he he pretty much like harvested and like planted all these like water watercress and kangkong like everywhere. And so we would go and I have to wear these, you know, the big boots. And you know, wow. you're you're like eight, nine, ten years old. So it's like, ugh, uh, you gotta go and wade in the water and you gotta pick it out. You know, he's yelling at you. But um, I think for me, uh, I didn't appreciate it then. But now looking back, becoming a chef. Um, and like knowing uh, what it took for him to just, you know, plant the seeds there and like harvest. Uh, I think that it's like, I can't, that memory is, is vivid. Um, and I'm appreciative of that now, um, especially because these days, you know, like, you know, farm to farm to table, like, hello, <laughs> especially because he just planted it like random places and <laughs> we would go. But the best part of the whole thing was at the end, I would get uh, this dish. Uh, my aunt would make me liver and onions. And, <laughs> uh, and that was that your was all, oh yeah, disgustingly, it was delicious for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so this uh, circling back to the Kang Kong um, is, what is the English name of that? Um, uh, Chinese water spinach. So it's okay. water spinach. Yeah. Okay, and we can find it here in the grocery yeah. store. Or do we have to go forage it? Yes, um, I'll send. Uh, I have. I'll pick some stuff later on for you guys to see. Um, but it's basically, yeah, it's just like a, a, a very hearty um, uh, vegetable. That's uh, the stems are like you can't even eat it. You know, you have to cook it down. Like it's like when you're making uh, collard greens, right? You got to cook it down to all hell um, yeah. and then, like eat it. But um, having to um, uh, this, uh, the way I prepare it is uh, using a, a weird tool that, <laughs> like this, I don't know if any of you know this tool, but it's, I don't know if you can see it. I found out about it. You see this? Yeah. How that looks like? Uh -huh. You basically, um, you kind of shred it and it kind of uh, becomes shreddable and then it's kind of, then you make it into a salad. Um, yeah, and you were telling me there's like a hole in the stem or something and so you, <laughs> Uh, thread the the stem onto the spindle, yeah. and then so, you pull it through, drag it through, and then it shreds the the um, the water spinach. And I heard, I saw somebody in the chat said, "Is water spinach morning glory?" No, yes. do not eat morning glory, <laughs> please. Right? It's is it morning, morning glory poisonous? It is. No, it's it's morning glory, but it's not poisonous it at is? all. No, no, not at all. 
I'm learning something really new today. Well, and that's why you have to cook right? it all hell. But when you um, traditionally, when you put it like this, and especially when you, it's like making ceviche, right? When you cook something, it cooks it off, um, especially when you're mixing it with the tamarind and stuff like that. But no, morning glory is not poisonous. Trust me, we eat it daily. <laughs> Gosh, I learned something new today. I learn something new every day, by the way. Um, that's awesome. Um, and then, so the next dish is the kare kare. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so kare kare. Or twist on it. What's that? Yeah. Oh, and there is one more thing. I wanted to go back. Sorry, sorry. On the salad, because this is important. I think this is important. The fish sauce that you use for the kare kare sauce. Oh, yes. Um, well, my, my love of Italian food, I don't know why, but, um, you know, I use colot uh, colatura. Did I say that right? Yeah. Uh, colatura. So uh, it's uh, Italian fish sauce. So it's basically, um, yeah, you know, fish sauce, guys. Uh, it's definitely, there's different brands, obviously different levels of, of, of stuff, but you, you, I forget the one you, you, uh, you suggested to me, but it's delicious. It's just like fish sauce, but it's more subtle. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's very pure, I think. Yes. Yeah. And it's not as in your face as a lot of um, fermented things that we like to cook with um, in right. Filipino uh, food. Right. When I thought it was a perfect, uh, just homage to whiskey. Yeah. Nice, thank you. And then the kare kare. Yeah, so the kare kare traditionally it's um, it's a, a a peanut heavy dish, peanut and annatto seed uh, um, stew basically. Traditionally, anyone raise your hands if you can afford oxtails. I can't. <laughs> I can't afford oxtails. <laughs> traditionally, it, it's it's made with oxtails, but uh, in this dish we're using brisket, um, and you know. Uh, working in the culinary industry, uh, we've, lear we've learned to use other different types of meats and things like that. Um, uh, this time I'm using the brisket um, and I'm, I'm cooking it instead of rice that it comes with, I'm gonna be using noodles because, you know, again, cooking at La Spiga, how can I not make noodles or, or use noodles to, uh, to showcase uh, our, our, this type of my, my food? That's awesome. Um, and then, but you made a special sauce for that. Yes, um, it's Dungeness crab since we're here. It's called, uh, um, so traditionally it's called bagoong, which is basically a shrimp, uh, fermented shrimp paste. Um, I, Andy loves when I cook with it because it's, he just comes upstairs and is like, what is that? What is that smell? <laughs> and it, I laugh, um, but it's, uh, it's a very overpowering uh, a fermented uh, uh, paste uh, that we use uh, in a lot of our, our, our cuisine. But how I'm using it uh, for this dish, I wanted something more subtle. And then growing up in the Northwest, you know, obviously I, I wanted to use something here. Um, I use Dungeness crab and annatto seeds um, to make this paste. Um, and then I, um, I ferment it and then I add um, garlic and chilies um, and some uh, other herbs. So it's more flavorful, um, but not as pungent as uh, um, bagoong. It's usually traditionally with the kare kare, it's usually on the side, as you'll see. Um, and then you kind of just mix it in, just like when you add like Parmesan to your pasta, you know, you mix it all in. Um, but just that color is so bright. And uh, the annatto seeds, um, if you know, if you've had Filipino cuisine before, you know, we we eat with our eyes, like literally everything is so colorful and vibrant. Um, and you see this bright orange color with the annatto seeds. Um, and I think it was just kind of my way of um, making a, a not so uh, pungent uh, fermented fish sauce, bagoong, but using the dungeness crab because we're here in Washington. Why not, right? Yeah, and it's delicious. I um, eat it by the spoonful. Um, <laughs> You did? As you know, as some of you may know, if you've participated in some of these Zooms, you know that the perk, the whole perk of this program is that I get to sample the food uh, long before y'all do. And um, so I still have just a little bit of that crab um, bagong. Is it yeah. my uh, bagong? Alamang, yes. Um, and um, I eat it by the spoonful. It's a little oily, but the yeah. flavor is just so good. I, I'm blown away. Because I've had the shrimp paste before and I... Yeah. You know, I could never do that with a shrimp paste, you know, the, the commercially produced shrimp paste, but this is so clean. So if you have leftover afterwards, don't throw it out. It's wonderful seasoning or just to eat as a snack. <laughs> I actually put it on, you know, we do the avocado toast. I actually just yeah. drizzle that on. 
That's perfect. <laughs> Yum. And what about the dessert? Uh, dessert um, is is my take on, um, I've always had like a lot of, um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always gifted or we're all gifted with jams and like going to the store and you're just like, I don't know, like, do I have any jam at home? No, there's just, it piles up. I don't know if you guys look in your pantry, I will guarantee you have half open jars. Um, this is um, my take on just using these damn jars. Uh, <laughs> So it's basically a uh, um, kind of like a shortbread uh, a, a tort, and I fill the jam, I fill the middle with jam, and then kind of a uh, you know make a little cake out of it. Um, but what's really special about it, I wanted to add some flavors um, for this event. Um, the rhubarb, of course, you know, working at La Spiga for eight years, like we made rhubarb crostadas, especially right now, and being May and spring, obviously had to use rhubarb but adding coconut to it um, and then adding some Filipino uh, flavors into it um, using, uh, um, I'm making a, a, a chai uh, a anglaise that's gonna go with it. It's coconut too as well. So it's kind of just, you heat it up and then you know you nuke it for like five minutes because you know I'm not sure if everyone's gonna use their oven, but yeah, it's a very, it's a very fun dish, especially because you'll have the recipe for it. And this is like my go-to, like if you want to impress, this is it, this is the one. <laughs> oh, good, it's so good. I was impressed, very uh, delicious. Um, so <clears throat> around this time last year, you had a trip planned to the Philippines and um, it was just before the pandemic. Yeah. And you had like a dilemma. You're just like, do I cancel the trip? Do I continue? Tell us a little bit about the purpose of this trip and will you plan, will you replan the trip? Do you think you'll go again? Do you think you'll go? Um, I think when definitely things are opening up more and we can 100% go, but this was, this trip was 40 years in the making, you know, basically. And um, last year um, we had literally bought tickets, my aunts and uncles, where we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go. And it was such a, you know, obviously if you're going with your family, like, duh, you know? So uh, for me, it was a little deeper because I wanted, um, I had some like fam family duties I needed to take care of. Um, before my mother passed away over 12, uh, almost 12 years now, um, her dying wish was to uh, find my father in Manila and um, find him, unearth him wherever he was, cremate him, and then bring him back to the States to be uh, buried with her on Queen Anne. Um, and that's always like, you know, like it's always been on my mind, obviously, to, to you know, fulfill her dying wish, you know, just to, to do it. Um, so when pandemic hit last year, it really, it, it hurt, it, it like really struck me that like I couldn't do that, especially because I was ready, you know, but it's okay. You know, we have time. There's, yeah. uh, I know we're gonna, we're gonna end up, I'm gonna end up doing the trip soon. Um, and there's other uh, bigger things that I want to do when I get there too, at this point now. Yeah, and you'll, you'll be doing a lot of research, even yeah. family, like with their family and just oh, kind of, you know, really retracing your roots and understanding where you come from, I think. And that's it. I think for me, it was just, um, if you guys, uh, some of you guys know me, but I just found out recently in January, I did this, um, uh, my cousins asked me to do this uh, DNA test and I finally did it. Um, and it turns out that I um, am adopted. Um, so it was, that has turned my world upside down. Um, and I think for me, I need to um, kind of find out like, you know, more because I need to know all the facts and information and things. And I think for me, it's more so that uh, I need to, I need to be there. And I know in my heart that I'm supposed to go and find uh, whatever that's there and just really just reconnect with the land, uh, the people there, the family that I have there still. And, um, you know, I don't know, I'm excited for it. So I just, I'm literally like, we can go, let's go. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I imagine that maybe it's a little bit less of a shock now that you know before you go over there. I know, right? <laughs> I can imagine if you had gone and then you found out that might, you know, kind of know. shade the trip in some sense. 
I mean, I think, I think in a sense too, it's just like, I think my mom, like, you know, there, there's, you know, she's always had her way of like, uh, you know, like sticking, you know, like, you know, trying to teach me life lessons and stuff still to this day, even though she's passed. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think she really knew that like, maybe someday I would find out eventually and um, find that. I think for me, what's hard right now in my life is um, I'm trying to not put those, uh, uh, use it as a positive thing um, and kind because, you know, it's literally like I'm figuring it out day by day, guys. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I think uh, it's going to be, I can't wait to have you guys see this whole process of it all. Yeah. So. Well, you talk about process. So process of what? So you're, this is, the, you're doing this all, all this research is going to come to a purpose. You have a purpose for this. And yes. so, you know, you have, there's a cookbook series in the works and I would love for you to tell us a little bit about that and what the whole goal of this um, cookbook series is. Yes. So it's definitely taking so many turns. Um, it originally started out as a children's cookbook, <laughs> um, but I think more, uh, more so as I'm writing slowly, um, it, it's it's more of a, a story of you know how things came to be with me, especially um, um, the whole uh, the mission of the book. If you guys don't know, it's healing through food, and I think that's uh, a big for me because, um, like I said to you guys before, when I'm cooking, I'm literally not by myself. I, I'm with you know my family. I'm with my mom. I'm with uh, people around me. I'm with like the people who taught me all these um you know techniques and and things and i'm literally there with you guys so i think uh with that mission in mind uh, i'm trying to find a way um uh, for this little kid back then to really um have some peace if that makes sense mm -hmm. uh, you know i don't want to dive deep into you know things of the past um but it's, it wasn't, it, sorry. It's <laughs> emotional. That, it's emotional. Uh, I think um, I'm trying to find a way in my own, in my own thoughts and um, by writing or, or showcasing food to, to heal from all of this. Um, and it's probably um, what I know um, personally uh, to, to do because, you know, other than uh, food, I don't know what else, you know, in my life that's, <laughs> that I'm good at, you know, <laughs> even though, yeah, so I think it's, it, it's a good positive way. And plus, for me, at the end of the day, I think it's these traditions and cultures and recipes have, ha, are gone, you know, grandma's dead, you know, like everyone's passed on, like no one knows these things anymore, these traditions and stuff. I want to uphold that, especially in our families, a uh, way of doing things, even though it's going to be a little different, though. <laughs> but uh, it's just a, it, it's remembering a time where, um, you know, it was it, remembering a time that was the best in life it, for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's sweet. Well, we all definitely look forward in sharing in your journey. Um, both professional and personal journey, because it sounds like it's going to be a combination of both, which is yeah. truly beautiful. And it sounds like you're going to be speaking from your heart. So that just means so much. So um, we, we all look forward to it, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, at least I do. I'm sure all of us. <laughs> do. Well, I can't speak for everybody, but um, so I, I noticed the time it's 533. Um, we do have a few more things that I would love to go through um, with Will, um, you know, feel free to stay on or if you have to leave, um, we totally understand. We won't take offense to that at all. Um, but I am, um, I, I, I can't help but mention that, you know, this is a program where we really want to support, you know, um, chefs in the community. And you have decided to donate your proceeds to an organization called Asian Counseling and Referral Services. And I'm, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit 
about why you decided to do this and also why you chose to do your guest chef in May. Um, so ACRS, Asian Council Referral Service, uh, has been around since the 70s. Um, when we came to America, we didn't have any resources uh, for us, um, you know, as immigrants and like trying to, you know, especially going through the doctors. I mean, like speaking English alone was like the worst. Um, they actually had so many people that can translate and um, help. So we uh, utilized their services and found doctors, dentists, even though I hate, I still hate going, but still hated going uh, to them. But I think for me, um, I remember um, my sisters, like they even worked there, like uh, back in the day um, in high school. And so that's back when they were in Viet Hoa back in the day in Chinatown in ID. Um, and I, I volunteered there in high school. So for me now, like being older and um, being able to just like give anything, like I, and especially this month, you guys, it's AAPI month, y'all. And I don't know about you, but I feel, we get a month and I feel so proud. Um, and I think this is kind of just like a thank you a little bit and to just, you know, in a way that you can just give back, you know? I love uh, volunteering and doing all that, but any in, in any sense that you can have a personal attachment to that and have uh, some history with that, um, I think it's just beautiful. Um, and I want to, um, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I'm happy for it. So, yeah. And then yeah. May, yeah. So, yeah, you've come full circle. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. Um, so. Um, I don't know if we want to bring this up, but we did have a comment, um, in response to our Instagram post. Is this something you want to talk about? A little controversial. Let's just like, let's just get in it. Like, all right. What? Yeah. Let's so gonna, I'm going to read. So you, you, uh, so Laspiga posted, uh, um, and, it, and this, uh, this gentleman, uh, responded, um, uh, to the post, um, he said, excellent stuff from Chef Yi, but I find Seattle's Met's description of him as POC, and then he parentheses, person of color, boorish. Let's just recognize individuals and celebrate their talents, not check boxes. And this was like, when I saw it, it was like 5.30 in the morning. And I'm like, you know, you know, you guys are like, what? And I, I couldn't, I couldn't go back to sleep. Like I, I was like, I need to respond to this. Like, how can I say? And I literally was like, I was angry, you know, but obviously can't go that route, right? Cause we gotta, we gotta represent in a, in a good way. So I responded, um, hello, this person's name, um, quote. And so I, I quoted back to him, let's just recognize individuals and celebrate their talents um, is exactly what the future of diversity uh, chef, uh, guest chef program is trying to do. 100%, a lot of us POC chefs have not been heard or known about. We are the backbone. Um, we are the backbone of all the wonderful food you've been eating in Seattle. I've served proudly in the Seattle service industry for over 20 years, and I'm grateful to share just a taste of uh, my food and culture. You're right. Um, you're right. Uh, we shouldn't be checking boxes, but honestly, we've never had any boxes to check. Um, and I thought, uh, I thought that was the best, uh, for me, that was the best response to someone that didn't really understand where we're coming from. You know, I think people forget a lot of times, uh, the restaurants that we service and go to, people forget that people, it's not just the chef that's featured, you know, there's, there's people that, that make the food, the prep all the things that kind of get involved, you know, from the servers to um, the dishwashers to everything. I think for me as a chef, like, you know, that's, I look at that as a whole, you know, and for someone to like say something like that, um, really, really kind of like hit home a little bit, but it's true. You know, I get where he's coming from, but I also, we need to be louder. We really need to just stand up and say, okay, that's not right. Let's, let's really exemplify and amplify our voices. And so this program really means a lot. You know, Sabrina, this is amazing. I can't, I'm so honored to be featured for May and it's AAPI month. Um, happy to be donating to ACRS. Like I could just cry. 
you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a beautiful feeling, especially now with everything going on in our world. Um, we really need to come together and just really just think about like, where are you spending your money at? You know, what does your, your dollar really mean and count for, you know, um, really know what that it's going to. And I think that's really important, um, especially because our, our, our money talks, guys, our money talks. It certainly does. Well, you deserve it, Will. So we're so happy to be supporting you. And um, so my last question would be, how can others support you? Like what, you know, you're on, on this journey, you know, we, you know, uh, we don't really know, you know, when it's going to come to fruition, but along the way, like how, what's the best way that our viewers can support you? Sadly, guys, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just a platform I'm used to now. I mean, I'm still learning other platforms, so you'll see things progress. Uh, but I think um, that's where I really just, I put, it's like a journal for me. You know, I don't know if you, if, if you follow me, you can just really see it um, there and you'll see the little steps and pictures and food and videos that I take. But I think for me, that's how I'm really writing this book. You know, it's just these uh, moments in time. And it's, it's really, I can see it you know, fully looking at, uh, sadly, Instagram of my, of my page. Um, but yeah, no, you can really, uh, I, I'm really inviting you guys. This is the beginning. You know, I've, I've, I've turned 40. Um, there's so much uh, going on in, in my life now. Um, but this is just the beginning of it. Like when I go to Philippines, it's, it's going to be something else, guys. And I don't want you guys to miss out, um, especially the food, obviously. Uh, and especially like, you know, just to see something in real time and see something that's just, uh, um, I think for me, I think at the end of the day, it's, I can't do this alone kind of feeling. And I think I, 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 I've been used to that being so alone for so long. I think this is a way for me to just share um, and express, you know, like uh, how I want to uh, move this forward, especially with my career in, in food and, and wherever the, the, the book lies. Um, but yeah, that's how you guys can really support. Um, yeah, and especially, you know, when I have little pop-ups there, I would love to you guys to uh, come in and support that too, you know, especially, you know, the recipes, guys, it's free. Come on, y'all. Yeah. 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 Well, if you haven't had a chance to look at Will's Instagram, um, I think you'll, be pleasantly amazed at how beautiful his photography and how well his he tells his story through his food. It's it's incredible. And the food that he makes on his Instagram reminds me of something that I would see on Anthony Bourdain or Chef's Table or whatever it is. It's it's beautiful. It's phenomenal. And he tells other stories as well about his life. He weaves everything in so beautifully. So I strongly recommend that you do follow him on Instagram and enjoy, um, enjoy the journey with him. Oh, yeah. Thank yes. You. Well, thank you so much, Will. Um, let's see. Um, I don't think we have time for questions. Um, I really apologize about that. If there's any um, especially if I have to go back and look at the chat. Um, if there's any burning questions that may be really, really quick um, that we can answer for you, um, please go ahead and unmute and ask that at this time. All right. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I do want to remind everybody that this is an ongoing program. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for supporting, supporting Chef Will and the program. We really couldn't do this without your help. Um, and also coming up in June, our June chef is uh, Chef Shaley Perrick. Um, who, yes, <laughs> who we know. I see Natalie there, Will, and I have all, all um, spent time with uh, Shaley at um, Quilla Saskett Farm uh, with Chef Karn as our instructor, who is um, Karn Jurgensen, who is also here today. Um, and that's where we met Shaley um, as well. And so she's going to, and Natalie is a past uh, guest chef for the uh, Future of Diversity program. 
Um, so Shaylee Perrick is going to be um, our next chef. She is going to draw from her passion and her background. She is uh, from India originally, and so she'll be cooking Indian food, but incorporating um, the foods that she forages uh, from the Pacific Northwest, which is her passion. So we look forward to also sharing uh, that journey with her. So we'll thank you once again for joining us and thank thanks to all of you, all the viewers who joined the Zoom this evening. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>